Dini Dini. Hey, what? You're about to start with the primer. Yes. Well, What's this that about? this is the first fresh paint that oh, we are I we're see. applying inside the boat. So exciting! <laughs> yes. Yeah, it took you a moment. <laughs> Welcome back to Magic Carpet. We are on the cusp of so many things at the moment, and it feels like we're just sort of filing out some of those last details before we can move on to some pretty big monumental steps. First of all, closing the decks. We've got the plywood cut out. The plywood is mostly epoxied and ready to go. There's just a few more finishing things. For example, we gotta sand the blocking and the beams and then apply a bit of varnish because we realized it is gonna be a lot easier to varnish the blocks now versus when the decks are in place. The next thing that we're on the cusp of is actually getting to apply some primer and paint to some areas, especially up in the chain locker and the V-berth. Those are the closest areas to being done and we might actually start to get them looking good soon. One challenge though before proceeding is that the weather gods are not on our side at the moment. It is pretty cold and then I will look at the weather forecast, it's not getting warmer. Primer, paint, epoxy, varnish, it's not just that it doesn't cure as fast or as properly, but it also doesn't flow as nicely, that's a really big one. You can apply heat, but it's not exactly the same. But we gotta do what we gotta do. So we have a little room with a pellet stove, so the removable parts uh, can start to be coated. Uh, but yeah, as Maya said, very exciting things, which we would be ready for. And if the weather was better, we could proceed much quicker. But we're gonna find some workarounds. Check it out! I'm so thrilled. We've been waiting for this shipment for a long time. We knew it was coming. So let's open it up. This means that we can get started on a few pretty exciting things. Resin for days. Oh yeah, that's another upcoming project, fiberglassing over the uncovered balsa on the interior. We'll be needing a lot of resin for that. So huge thanks to Toto Boat for believing in our project and helping us out with these items. Now, let's put them all to work. So, I have focused on the bee birth again a little bit. And one thing that I always do is I reinstall the pieces that were in the boat originally to decide are they good? Is the height good? How is the axis of the storage? The top, we're still undecided. We might redo the top. And the next step though is since we have decided to reuse all other parts of the V-burst besides the top, is to coat those with a uh, coat of primer. Got built in storage, there we go. With the pellet stove warming our little painting room, it was time to break open the primer. This will be the first paint of any kind that we actually apply to any part of our boat. So it's a big moment. Going, 
so I did have the primer inside of our heating tent as well. It always helps. What's the opposite of solidify? Liquify? Sure. <laughs> uh, make things more liquid, especially since this is a high build primer, so it actually has a lot of uh, solid, solid content in it. Primer is really recommended and needed. First of all, it creates much better adhesion for the paint and it also helps you come to the desired final color. You would think, well, the paint makes it white, but it doesn't because it shines through unless you use many coats. So you want to, the primer to help you with that. Yeah. I am very excited about using an epoxy primer because it, well, it is the ultimate chemical, uh, so to speak. Um, so we are really waterproofing things and um, having a tough finish on everything. No need to hurry here, like with many epoxy products. It has a 30 minute induction time, which means you should just, after mixing it, let it rest for 30 minutes. While we waited for the primer to activate, I degreased all the surfaces with some acetone. And then, time to paint. You do something to me, babe. Cause when I see you, I illuminate You turn my lemons into lemonade And I'm thinking that you feel the same Alright, we're back. A bit of time has passed. Two coats now have been applied to this. So there we go. This is ready for a light sanding, just to even everything out, and then for paint. So, while Maya is coating some parts of the rebirth, I have been finalizing the rest. I made these two axis patches, or whatever you want to call them. We don't know what we're using the space for yet, but it's always useful. Um, even if it is for inspection, cleaning, and just, I like axis. Now it's time to bring all these parts down so that we can on one side coat the chain locker, coat the bilge and also coat these parts. about to start with the primer yes <laughs> well What's this this is the first fresh paint that oh, we are we're applying inside the boat so exciting <laughs> yes. yeah it took you a moment <laughs> well we've been playing with primer for two days now uh just to get familiar with it and i know but it's been off the boat this is in the oh, boat oh yes <laughs> right <laughs> So I think this might be a bit challenging for me to film. For me to do as well. Yeah, I know. So we have all this plastic here. Oh, turn around. Tight quarters, tight quarters. But we have this plastic covering the door and we've got a little space heater running. But yeah, Dean's going to be crammed in there. Aladino, you know, I still don't understand how you're going to do this and not get paint all over you. Like if I were to do this, I would be covered in paint. <laughs> yeah, it will. Um, yeah, maybe it is a good idea to wear a, a, a suit. A Tyvek suit? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
There's some boat yoga for ya. And then, somehow, right after painting and without changing his Tyvek suit, Aladino went straight into sanding up on the decks. I don't understand this, because if I had done that paint job, I'd be covered in wet primer from head to toe. But somehow Aladino remained so spotless that he could move straight into sanding without the risk of smearing primer everywhere, and I will never understand how he does that. Good morning. Good morning. It is very cold. Good morning indeed. <laughs> How is the chain locker? Have you looked at it this morning? Yeah, pretty good. So it's dried overnight? Not all of it yet. Yeah. Um, no, it, it's dry. Yeah, just paint spills where it's pretty thick. It takes longer since it yeah. was really cold. Yeah, but the heater was on all night, right? Nope. No. No? Oh, off. you turned it After off? After dinner, yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right, let's go have a look. Let's go. Oh, so cool to finally have some paint in the boat. I'm gonna get out of here pretty quick because I should have put on my mask. It's pretty smelly, but that looks great. All right, back out here where it doesn't smell so much. So are you happy with the results? Yeah, totally. Yeah? Yeah. Sweet. Meanwhile, over in the painting room, we moved on from primer and actually started applying paint. We're using a two-component polyurethane paint from Epiphanus. It's our favorite paint because it's very durable, scratch-resistant, and beautiful. It's what we used on Magic Carpet 1, both inside and out, and we like it so much that we've decided to use it again on Magic Carpet 2. Good morning, Deanie. Good morning. Good, nice weather, hey? Yeah. Perfect for painting and varnishing. Exactly, that's what's on the program. <laughs> well, I do wanna, I'm gonna come up there because we did do a bunch of stuff yesterday that I didn't film because I was just like in a frenzy working away. Mm -hmm. So we'll film a tour of that now. Yeah. Maybe we shall call this episode, Oh Glorious Sanding. <laughs> As you all know where it comes from, mm -hmm. uh, Matt does come up with some um, pretty great sayings and quotes about yeah. boat life. 
Indeed. All right, so let's do a little tour of what happened yesterday. Come on in. All right, we've got no more paint on the bulkheads. Here and here and here. And also, if you come in here, also no more paint over here. I mean, of course, there's still the edges to do, so I have to go with a little scraper, but I just took the sander. That looks fun. And went over them. Yes. Well, and I asked you to keep a little bit of white where yeah. the bunks were, just so that I have the reference uh, yeah. to make the new ones. Yeah. Because we don't have full freedom. Um, we want to, the only thing the boat came with were nice cushions. So um, we want to have those fit again. Yeah, so we want to rebuild the bunks back to the same dimensions. Exactly. But, wow, cool. Yeah, I went on a rampage. I was listening to a podcast. I got stuck into this, like, really good podcast series. And so I just didn't want to stop sanding because then it meant that I would have to pause my podcast to, if I, to go do anything else. So I just kept going and going. And today my shoulders are aching so much. So I think I might do um, an editing day today. What about just varnishing now? Isn't that a cool look? Dean, okay. Now we varnish over <laughs> this. Wow. Um, but you also did a whole bunch yesterday, so I'll take the camera now and you show what you did. All right, Dini, show us what you did yesterday. I also did a bunch of sanding, but I think you referred to the priming. Making things better again. Look at that! Hey, awesome! And it's actually nice and toasty in here. And the little strip that is not done is because there is going to be more fiberglass tabbing there. Uh, so there was no need. But yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Chain locker is done and the bill just coated. I think it's just really nice to see everything. Even though this is like a weird color, it's sort of like this off gray sort of thing. Um, but it's just nice to see things be one color at all. Because like so much of all this has just looked patchwork for yeah. so long. Well, to be very honest, I mean, I wish this product came in white. I would leave it as is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really satisfying. It's really awesome to work with. Um, that's why I chose high build. It really is high build. Um, it is like using gel coat and it fills up uh, nooks and crannies and crevices and it really builds up uh, quickly. So that's really awesome. The hook, though, is that, of course, being a primer, we're not done yet. Um, this will get scuffed up lightly, and then we will paint over it. And instead, if it was gel coat, then uh, that's the final result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as I said before, we have so many epoxy repairs going on that I just chose this product for compatibility. Yeah, well, because this whole V-Birth was fiberglassed with epoxy. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Also, whenever I have time in between, I continue with sanding. Uh, what I'm sanding right now is the blocks and what I can access part of the beams from what I can access from here. That is because before closing the decks, we get much easier access of the blocks and we want to varnish those uh, before the deck goes down. But we will have to wait with that because it is really cold. Yeah. And, uh, and it's really hard to heat. Yeah this because it's like you can heat in the boat but then the heat all just comes out of the decks so <laughs> unless we build a bubble there's so much else to do we can wait for this exactly. for the temperature to be a yeah. bit better so it's just because everything is prepared now and we've worked so many weeks at preparing the plywood preparing here putting in the blocks that it just feels so exciting we could be ready to close it up and finish but um yeah let's not get ahead of ourselves and yeah. um, this might only create trouble and more work so we wait for a bit warmer climate and uh, focus on other things in the yeah. meantime yeah so we set out with the goal to close the decks i don't know if we're gonna get there in this episode but i am really happy with the priming that's going on with the sanding all the preparation to really start to make things look beautiful again so I think that's where we're going to leave this episode and hopefully it warms up here soon so we can start varnishing and then putting the decks down. But in the meantime, there's always lots of activity on Magic Carpet 2 and we'll be back next week to share some more of it with you. 
Thank you so much for watching. A huge thanks to our patrons for making this all possible. If you'd like to become a patron, it's as little as $2 a month. It's really totally up to you what you pay. And there's lots of behind the scenes access, um, way more communication with Jeannie and I. And yeah, every Tuesday there's a real time update as well, because of course uh, these YouTube episodes are not in real time. Also, a really huge thanks to you guys just watching on YouTube who are not patrons. We are really appreciative of just being here, leaving us a thumbs up, leaving a comment, subscribing to the channel. And last but certainly not least, a huge thanks to the folks whose names are now appearing on screen. These guys always go the extra mile to make sure that Magic Carpet keeps being produced. And we'll see you all in the next episode.